All right, here we go. We got Brownsville's finest. Rock this nice. monster in the building of the legendary group Helter Skelter. What's good? Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> what up, though? What's up? You know, we've been talking about doing this for a lot of years, man. Yeah. I feel a little way. I feel a little way for two reasons. One, because it took so long to happen. And two, there's not an actual couch here. I always thought there would be an actual couch, you know what I'm saying, and an old nigga need back support. But we're going to rock. <laughs> We used to have the couch in our, in our old studio. That's All how right. the name came about. All right. You know, now the Vlad chair don't sound as good. The Vlad chair. I guess. <laughs> I seen the comfortable one out there, like the barber chair with the cushions and all that. I could have. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we were going to use that, but it didn't quite look right on camera, maybe. You know, we'll you. see. We'll see. But that's where all the pictures are done, you right. know, the barber chair. All so right. you'll still get to experience that. All right. That's what it is. <laughs> so, so you got into hip hop. You know, you said at one point that you, you kind of got lucky because you had friends that were already doing it. Like, like what, what made you really want to get into, into rap initially? Well, it's not like I had friends that was, or I didn't really have friends that were already doing it. I mean, when I say that, I mean still. Still in, in tech from Smith & Wesson. Like, still, me and still been friends since I was 14 years old. You know what I mean? And of all of us, we are the only two in the boot camp, to my knowledge, that would that were introduced to each other because of rap. Because it was his uncle who, who introduced me. You know, as an older dude in the projects, you know all of the youngins, you know dudes, little brothers and dudes, you know, so his uncle knew me and he introduced and he introduced us together because we were because of both of our talent. You know what I mean? And we just connected. But what I what I really mean when I say that is still was already kind of doing his thing. He was already chasing the dream. And yeah, I was too, but my mans from my building, because we from the same projects, but I was my mans from my building and it was him from his mans across the street. But my mans from my building was full of shit. They was not supporting the movement the right way, you understand what I'm saying? I put two of my mans on blast at the album release party the other night. Like these niggas was supposed to be my scoop and scrap. These niggas ain't have not one routine. All these niggas did was crack jokes all day. And when I ran into Steel, you know, when I linked up with Steel and I seen his movement, like, you know, his soldiers, you know, they was they was a little more serious. And I was like, I'm fucking with that. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I you know, I just played my my position. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't jump in and go, yo, I wanna be that. That was, you know, that that felt a little corny, a little awkward. You understand what I'm saying? But I just played my position, you know what I mean? And and things started to pan out from that point on. Still was the one who was willing to not only do the, he would do dirt with us, but then he would leave and go to work and, and he would actually pay for studio time and he would actually shop a demo. So it's like he did all the real work. Like Buck was Steele's friend. The rest of us didn't know Buck. You understand what I'm saying? Buck was the, I mean, Steele was the connection. Okay, because initially Black Moon came out. Right. And uh, it was like, it kind of shook things up. It was a real underground classic. It, it didn't go platinum or anything. Right. But like people who were into hip hop like myself were like, oh, this is like the next shit. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you got introduced to Boot Camp Click. So when you started really hooking up with these guys, was there a Boot Camp Click and was, was Black Moon out already? No, when, um, I mean, when I met Buckshot, he was already out. Who got the props was out already when I met Buckshot. But all of the rest of the members of boot camp, we've known each other since high school or before. All, all the rest of us. Like we literally, most of us are from the same projects. Starang Wonder is from the building across the street from the projects. You know what I mean? Like uh, Sean Price was from down the block, you know, in the next projects or whatever. Only, only, only Tech was from Best Stop. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so let's talk about high school. Right. Now, you were a Decepticon in high school. Yes, I was. Sean Price, too. Yes, he was. Were the rest of the boot camp guys Decepticons also? Most of us, yes. Okay, so for those that don't know, because I, I didn't grow up on the East Coast, mm -hmm. explain to me what the, Decept what the Decepticons were. It was the wildest juvenile shit that hit the streets in the 80s and early 90s. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was... It was started by a bunch of smart dudes. Dudes was geniuses, but like most gangs start, it start 
to my knowledge, because I ain't no, you know, I was good in history at school, but I don't study history for shit no more, and I'm sorry, right? But only, in, only when I need to, right? But most gangs start from what, like, like this one, to my knowledge. Somebody got fucked with, you know what I'm saying? Somebody fucked with somebody, somebody did something to somebody, and then a few dudes band together to do something about it. You understand what I'm saying? And then it just grows like everything else grows and it turns it turns into something ginormous. And, you know, without no real, you know, we, we young and we got, we smart, but we don't have no real direction like dudes. It, it turns bad, it, it can turn bad fast and it usually does, you understand what I'm saying? And that's what it was, you know what I'm saying? It was real, it, it wasn't even like we was out, we, it, it wasn't even like niggas was trying to get money, you understand what I'm saying? It's just like niggas was on hell, death, and destruction, you understand what I'm saying? And I got down with that a little bit later, you know, because like the dudes who started the game went to the smartest school in Brooklyn, it was called Brooklyn Tech, Brooklyn Tech, Brooklyn Tech, and you had to take a test to get in there. So the dudes who started this shit, these niggas were some bright kids. This was just a bunch of smart, crazy niggas and shit got out of hand. But, you know, for the most part, I, I mean, like, like I can admit that it was out of hand. I don't, you know, I don't promote what we did. Like, I don't promote gang banging, but I am not against gangs. You understand what I'm saying? Because everybody got a gang. They just label them different. The police is a gang, the Republicans, the Democrats. There's a whole bunch of niggas that just banging for what they want and not what you want. And that's the same shit, you understand what I'm saying? And, you know, the system is out to kill us anyway. So it's like, where's our armies? You understand what I'm saying? We don't got that. So we might need that one day. So just not on each other. And that's what we did. But we made some lifelong friends out of that. And that was, that was a good thing. So the Decepticon name, I mean, I'm assuming it came from Transformers, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But 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 why why did you guys choose the Decepticons as opposed to I don't know I mean I guess the Autobots don't sound as cool. But. I mean the Decepticons was the bad guys and you know the bad guy in the movie is always the more fun one. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So as a Decepticon, like what was the craziest shit that the Decepticons were known for? Like what what hit the papers and, and got um, y'all's name? Dudes out there? used to you, we chose hammers for weapons. And I don't mean guns, you understand what I'm saying? I mean hammers. And a lot of people got hit with hammers back in the days and all of that. And so yeah, that was, that was. I mean, as far as specific incidents, I can't talk about all that, you understand what I'm saying? Like I don't, like I said, I don't study enough to know the statute of limitations on anything. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not, <clears throat> we are not gonna go there, you understand? But niggas did some, niggas did bad things, you know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of them are sorry for for a lot of those things, but I'm sure a lot of them ain't. You understand what I'm saying? Like it, it just was what it was at the time. Uh, okay, like I, I've never heard of people warring with hammers. Like, oh nah, we it was it was hammers, uh, monkey wrenches, any type. Of, like the more the hammer was the staple, but the more creative you could get with your weapon, the more props you got. You know, we loved the nigga walking around with hedge clippers or something like that. Like that was you the dude. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, now you got locked up at one point. I got and, locked uh, up a lot of times, but okay, I've never. Ninety two, you got locked up. Yeah, yeah, that was the longest I've ever I was ever locked up. It was only for six months though. Okay, can you, you know say what, what it was for? Um, it was a it was a robbery. It was the only and don't get it twisted. I used to rob, for real, right? I mean, no big gigantic robberies. I mean, I was I was a young nigga doing small time robberies. I used to do it all the time though, like very active with it, but. It was the one robbery I didn't do. And I got, I was on the scene and all that. I tried to prevent the robbery because it was a little, we had a little static going on with some dudes up at the school that we referred to as Cybertron, home of the Transformers and shit. And that was a school called Graphic Communication Arts. Back in the days, they used to call it printing, high school of printing. And, um, you know, I had started going up there late. Like by the time I started going up to that school, tech, Steel and Ruck were all out of that school. You understand what I'm saying? Like I was a Brownsville D set for real. You understand what I'm saying? But by the time I started going up there, you know, it was a little static going on with with the Harlem dudes, the Harlem D sets, and just the Harlem dudes in general. And there was some static that I got caught up in. Had a riot one day, rumble and shit. Shout out to my man Sean Black that used to run with Sadat X. I don't know if he still run with him, 
But, so, but Sean Black was fighting on the other side of that right. Me and Sean Black threw lefts and rights at each other. That's the homie, though, right? But um, that happened, and, you know, I came back. Like, I was back up at the school a couple of days yet, a, a couple of days later for part two. You understand what I'm saying? And while we was waiting, all of the cons and shit, you know, they robbing niggas coming up the block, all this, that, and the third. And I ran down on the con niggas, cons are the DCEP niggas, I run down on them, and I'm like, yo, stop, that's not what we're here for. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all gonna make the spot hot before we get the, you know what I'm saying, the shake out and all of that. I'm like, you know, we got, you know, niggas is up here, they got, you know, when it's specific, niggas might have had weapons other than the household ones, you understand what I'm saying? Like, So I'm like, yo, niggas up here got it, dude, don't blow up the spot, this, that, and the third. And the niggas... Did it again, and while they and when I seen it happening, I walked over there. I barked on the niggas. I put the little nigga leather jacket back on him. You understand what I'm saying? All of that, and all of that, and all of that, and sent him about his way. But I had a little shorty up there. I used to love this chick. I used to love her to death, right? And this was when she was we was new to each other and shit. Rest in peace to my sweetie, right? But we was new, so I was supposed. I was planning on going up there. Shaking out and being done in time to meet her at 2.30 when she, when she get out of school and then spin off with her. You understand what I'm saying? And the shakeout didn't happen. The niggas did all the robbing and all of a sudden, you know, it's almost 2.30. The shakeout about to happen. and But the little nigga called the police and police came and ran down on A. And, and the, this is the dumb shit I did. Like. It was a it was a cop that was that used to always be up there. I don't remember his name. Probably O'Connor or some shit like that. He saw me. Like he was he would never catch me in no dirt. Never. All he ever saw me doing was waiting for my shorty. You know what I'm saying? And when he saw me up there, like, he was like, yo, I said, I already know. I already know. You waiting for your girl. Just go around the corner and wait. You understand what I'm saying? Cause there was and I went around the corner, I should have bounced. If 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 I would have followed the, 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 the advice of Ruck, I'd have been gone. Now, Ruck wasn't there that day, but that's just how Ruck moved. Like, it's not sticking around to see none of that shit, right? But I did, and dude literally pointed me out. Six of us got locked up. You know what I'm saying? I got locked up with five co-defendants. Um, I think four out of five co-defendants was bitch-ass niggas. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, because that be the shit with gangs. A lot of the niggas in the gang be soft. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what make it corny. Everybody running around trying to do the, you know what I'm saying, this, that, and the third, but it'd be a bunch of soft niggas. Long story short, I ended up doing six months, but I, that the charges was dropped. You know what I mean? That shit, nothing ever happened. No, nothing, nothing ever came of that. During that time, who was the crazier one? Was it you or Sean Price? <laughs> That's a white boy question. I just wanted to say that. I always wanted to tell you that. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> that is a white boy question. Black dudes don't ask that question right there. But um, nah. And, nah, but um, I think Ruck was always crazier. I mean, our names were all adjectives. You understand what I'm saying? My name is Rock. Ruck is short for ruckus. You understand what I'm saying? You wrap your head around that and it is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Like, my shit was just always you know, solid. You know what I'm saying? You can lean on me. You know, I'm 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 sturdy. You know what I'm saying? I I will be your rock. I've always been there. I've always been a rider. Half of the half of the drama I've more than had ninety percent of the drama I've ever been has never been my drama. It's been somebody it's the fact that I'm protective and you can't play one of my peoples without me at least trying to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Diffuse, pop, whatever the case may be, you know, over the years. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I was just an angry nigga, you understand, when I was young. Like, I was just so hardcore. But it's because I was angry. I grew up angry. I was the youngest in the crib and shit like that. I had an older brother that used to beat brakes off me and shit. You know, just to make me tough, whatever. You know, my si no, no, my older brother was foul. Fuck making me tough. He was foul. My sister was foul. You understand what I'm saying? My mom's mean as shit. I had the moms where it's like, yo, all your friends is outside. You got to come in 7 o'clock. 
But you, but and then and, and then on a summer day, all your friends is outside. You can't go outside yet. It's too early. Wait till about one o'clock, nigga. Like her favorite word was no. You asked her for any, she said no first. Then she thought about it. You understand what I'm saying? So I ain't get a lot of. You know, I was I was at the bottom of the totem pole in my crib growing up. So that pissed me off. By the time I went outside, I was always, you know, I I, I, I always had a little attitude. You understand what I'm saying? I just walked out of some bullshit to get outside or whatever. You know how they used to say, stop frowning your face up or, you, you, or you, it's going to get stuck like that? Well, that's why I look like I look. You understand what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't stop frowning my face up and shit. But, you know, that was, so I was hardcore. You know, I was mean. I was, I was, um, I was, um, inapproachable and all that shit. And I and I believed in severe penalties. Like I, did, it was it wasn't such a thing as take it light, but Ruck was definitely crazier. Like my moms always would be like, no, 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 Sean is crazy, like a special kind of crazy. Like for real, he was he was different. You know what I mean? He just was.